Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a new lecture within our Jean Monnet Open Online Course of European Integration, which this year is uh, focused on strategic communications. As you know, this uh, series of lectures, this course, is part of a Jean Monnet chair in European pol in political economy that is financed from the Erasmus Plus program of the European Union. It's the uh, Erasmus Plus program is the European Union's education program. And in, uh, as part of this program, it has the Jean Monnet actions that support courses about European integration. It's very important that we mention who our sponsors are at the beginning of our lectures for two reasons. On the one hand, because of um, gratitude, because of the acknowledgement of this financial support from the European Commission. But on the other hand, also for the sake of transparency, because it's important that you know who pays for information you receive in order to be able to critically analyze this information. Today is a very, very important day for the Eurosci network and for this course in particular, because today we have a new group of students from a very, very important partner of the network, from Odessa University in Ukraine. Um, I, I, I show you our students in Odessa. I thank all of them very much for their participation today. This is a great day for this course and for the Eurosci network in general. Spasiba, uh, you. Thank you. <clears throat> we, we also um, are waiting for other groups to join, but we also have a um, connection from Chernivtsi, Irina's uh, group, today from a new room with a nice view with uh, journals, publications behind. It looks, uh, it looks very, very good this group, and I hope it will be growing in the future. We will support her, we will offer all our support. All the partners of the network will help Irina Tkachuk to be able to grow her group as much as possible. Thank you very much. And today we also have a, um, a student from the University of Suchava, Solojuk who comes from Kampulunk, Moldovenesk, which is in the Bukovina region. The Bukovina region is a cross-border region. It's a region that is part of Romania and part of Ukraine at the same time. And the uh, Solojuk comes from the southern part of Bukovina, the part that is inside uh, Romania. Uh, thank you also very much for your presence. And finally, we have my favorite student, who is uh, Alina. She's my favorite student because she has the best connection of everyone, the best sound quality, the best uh, connection uh, that makes our course much, much easier. Last, um, last week, on Friday, we had our first seminar. This course has uh, lectures and seminars. Lectures are on Mondays at 11.30 Eastern European time, and lectures are Fridays at 18.00 Eastern European time. Last Friday, we had our first lecture, and we had people from the University of Yash and the University of Suchava in Romania. And we also had people from the University of Chernivtsi. And also for the first time, we had two people from the University of Piracicaba in Brazil, which was a very, very new experience for us because between Romania or Ukraine and Brazil, there's six hours time difference. And uh, it was... Uh, really a nice experience to be able to have a, um, 
intercontinental uh, seminar last week but also like um, we always experience at the beginning of our new initiatives we often have technical technical difficulties that we improve a long time for instance the case of uh, valentina valentina is still uh, having difficulties she says that she can't either hear or see us they are having problems you see last week she was the the one who managed to have the great connection but this week we have odessa which means that together we are strong and when one fails the other one comes to the rescue so this is a very good a very good thing thank you very much uh, vital okay uh, today's lecture will be about a very very important topic today's lecture will be about project management and in particular about the methods that we will use for project management inside our course that are called agile methods so today's course will be about agile project management but before we start with project management, I, I will stop my Facebook because Valentina keeps sending me images of the class in, in, in Chernivtsi. I think they are watching us. They are watching us on, on YouTube, probably, which is much... Uh, much easier they can also write they can participate on youtube if they like so today's lecture is about agile project management but we first need to start explaining what project management means and the first thing to learn project management is to learn what uh, a project is and a project is defined by three components of a project there are three basic elements of a project every project must have three elements and the three elements of a project are the scope of the project the cost of the project or the resources of the project and the time of the project the duration of the project so a project is something limited a project is something limited in scope is something limited in the resources it can use it's something limited in its cost and thirdly it is limited in time this is a project and probably many of you who come from former communist countries you learn now a lot about project and project management and project management is very popular for you many people are offering you courses on project management or you think project management is important for instance to be able to access some european union funds or american funds or funds from other foreign organizations that wants you to run a project well a project is a scope in a given time with a certain amount of resources but project management is a way to run an organization using project management is a way of um, or organizational management and it's something that opposes itself to the so-called functional organization when i visit romania or i visit other countries that have a tradition a communist tradition and they have a very bureaucratic tradition the 
way of organization is called functional or organization yes and each person for instance if you get a job if you are hired in some uh, institution or even in some company sometimes they give you a paper with your list of functions in Romanian, this is called statul de functi. Yes, and this is very important for the functional organization. To each person should know what his or her functions are. You can think of this kind of organization as a factory. If you have a factory that makes cars, that makes Volkswagen cars. And, and this factory has many employees in the factory, has 1,000 employees in the factory, and each person has a function. And there is one person that has the function to uh, use the screwdriver to, to, for the screws of certain part of the car. Uh, we put Romulus in mute because he makes an echo for us. I think he's hearing on YouTube and uh, at the same time, this is not possible. Either Google Hangouts or YouTube, not both at the same time. It creates echo. Welcome, uh, Romulus from Suchava. So in a factory, People is specialized, and that is very important. Adam Smith, in The Wealth of Nations, when he told about specialization, the gains from specialization, he mentioned the example of a factory when they make pins, and there's one person specialized in cutting the wire, another person in sharpening the wire, another person in uh, welding the cap of the pin. And this increases productivity. This is the functional organization, it is important. And in such kind of organization, each person has one function. One person straightens the wire, one person cuts the wire, one person sharpens the wire, one person welds the cup, and one person puts the pins into a box. And each person, like in Romania, can have statul de functi, the functions that this person does. Yes. But what happens is that this type of um, organization, the functional organization, sometimes doesn't work very well. Yes. You can think also as a agricultural cooperative a very large agricultural cooperative and each person has one function one is the driver of the tractor one is the the person that collects the harvest one is the the one who plants the seeds and so on their specialization but sometimes this kind of organization doesn't work very much because it's very centralized because it's something in which each worker has one function, but each worker does not care so much about the final, pro the, uh, the final product of the organization. So if you are in a car factory and each one has one function and you care about doing your function, and when you talk to a civil servant, to a... Uh, um, functioner and they say i do my function i do what my uh, list of functions tells me to do but the organization doesn't work and they just care about their functions well project management is an alternative to this project management is another kind of organization in which the organization is not divided in departments. 
not divided in specialized departments, the department of sales, the department of production, the department of uh, purchases and the department of um, communication and the department of uh, human resources. No, in project management, the organization is divided into projects, which as I said, a project is uh, limited in scope, limited in time and limited in resources. But within the scope, time and resources of the project, there's some degree of autonomy, which means that project management is also very important as a decentralization tool because it allows to give management power to the project manager, not only the dean of the faculty or not only the owner of the business or the director general of the business has the power over decisions. The project manager has power within the scope, time and resources of the project. So that is why project management is so popular and so important when one country is in transition from a very centralized system into a more dynamic and more decentralized system. I have a question for Alina. Alina. Please yes. yes, Alina, my question is, if you have heard this expression, statul de functi. Have you heard about that, statul de functi? Till now, no. No, because you have you worked till now in, in, public, in the public sector or not? No. No? And in private companies, have you worked? I am working now. You are working now. Where are you working now? Uh, for um, a medical company as a content editor. Mm -hmm. Is it a foreign company or a Romanian one? Or? A Romanian uh, company. Mm -hmm. And when you were hired, they told you what you need to do in this company or not? Yes. Of course. And they put it on paper or not? Uh, yes, they present the, the obligation and uh, everything uh, while they were presenting on the papers. Uh -huh. the they, they gave you a list of functions, what you need to do, right? Yes. This is like statul de functi. Yes, probably Romulus have heard this expression. Romulus, please unmute your phone. No. So, solo juke. Yes, I have heard of uh, this kind of things. Uh, when I have been hired, they told me what should I have to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's my job. <laughs> it's a document with the contents of your job, yes? And they tell yeah, of course. Uh, you are in this um, car production factory and your job is to tighten the screws. Right. Right. Yeah, something like, something like that, but I'm a pharmacist and I have something else to do. <laughs> yes, but it's the equivalent, yes? Just to... Yeah, of course. This to you. Okay. I put you in mute and we go on. So the idea is that this... Um, functional organization is a very classic one it's an effective type of organization but sometimes for certain types of products it is not so effective and for instance this idea of project management it started in very large organizations like such as the department of defense of the united states or nasa when they want to have some important results and they need to be more flexible about that and they need to give more power to the managers 
of the projects. And they created this idea of project management for important projects such as the development of nuclear submarines or for sending a man to the moon or for other kinds of uh, endeavors of the organization when they thought that the functional organization was too tight. It was not flexible enough to allow for the development of these new uh, products, which is something very important for our students in Suchava, like Sorojuk or Romulus, because they are in a master's program on the development of new tourism products and destinations. They are not on a master's about tightening screws in a car factory. They are in a program about innovation, about developing, developing new products. And project management is very important for such kind of um, scopes. So project management is important and is particularly important in organizations that are very large and very centralized. So when you work at NASA or when you work at the Department of Defense and it's a very large organization with hierarchy, with generals, with ministers, with secretaries, then it is too large sometimes to be able to develop a new product, such as a nuclear submarine or a rocket that will go to the moon. In these cases, we invent project management. And project management nowadays is used almost everywhere. And it's especially effective in those cases where the system is so hierarchical, the organization is so large that the organization is not dynamic enough and project management helps solve this. And this is particularly the case in post-communist countries. In post-communist countries, project management is very important nowadays because they are still used to this very high large and hierarchical organization where, for instance, if you are in a faculty and if you want to do something, you need the stamp of the dean of the faculty. And they talk about this idea, dreptul de stampila, which means that nothing can move without the approval of the head of the organization. This can be good in, in some cases, but it is not so good for innovation, yes, for creating a new tourist product as what they are learning in, in Suchava. So that's why in this course we need to introduce project management because what we will do in this, in this course is not tighten, tightening screws in a car factory. What we will do is something innovative. This course is an innovative course. And this course is something that uh, <clears throat> requires uh, an organization that is flexible enough to be able to carry out this course. The European Union, when the European Union gives funds to a university, it already organizes itself, in this case, in projects. So they give you money for one project. And this project has also a scope. And this project also has an amount of resources. They give you some funding for. So for instance, if they give you a Jean Monnet chair, they tell you the scope of your chair that you should teach a number of courses. They tell you also the resources that you will have, and they will also tell you the time that you will have. And when, when you are within the realm of the project, 
when you are inside the scope of the project, the resources of the project and the time of the project, then you have greater autonomy, right? So project management is important and project management is used everywhere. If you are in a large um, company such as Amazon, yes? And Amazon has offices in, in Yash, Amazon Development Center. It makes software for Amazon worldwide there in Yash. But they also have projects. And they say, we want to create a new system, a new website that will have these functionalities. And for doing this, we have these resources, we have these people, this personnel, and we also have this time. And we create, we appoint a project manager that will be responsible to achieve the scope of the project within the cost of limitations of the project and within the duration, the time limitations of the project. And this is something that is very much used uh, in modern organizations and it it works but what happens sometimes is that project management is not understood correctly so when project management comes to an organization that is used to a functional style from the past and you are a project manager they don't understand this yes they don't understand that it is good for the organization to give certain autonomy to project managers sometimes the leader of the organization if there is one project going on in the organization they can be scared they think oh but this person is not consulting me is doing uh, what he wants is 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 not respecting the hierarchy of the organization because they are used to the functional organization but project management is not something so important so so serious to be afraid of the leaders of large organizations should not see project management as a challenge. Project management is something that helps the organization deliver results. And as a result of that, it's also good for the leaders of the organization. So you imagine that you have an agricultural cooperative and you are the leader of this cooperative and everything that is done needs your approval you need to stamp any new initiative of this organization well in this case the system is very inflexible but what if for instance you want to start a new crop you want to try a new crop you want to try for instance if uh, a crop that comes from australia will be able to be produced also in ukraine and you want to try that in that case you can use a project and you can appoint a project manager and you can say yes this is a very large agricultural cooperative but now we make you project management project manager and we will give you this scope to try to see whether kiwis from australia can be produced in ukraine this is the scope of your project and for this project we will give you this small plot of land within the cooperative and we will give you three workers of the cooperative and we will give you one tractor of the cooperative. This will be the resources that you will have. And we will give you three years 
to make your experiments and to see whether kiwis from Australia can be produced in Ukraine. And this is project management. And it's a, something that the leader of the cooperative should not be afraid of. Because it's something good for the results of the cooperative. But sometimes this happens, you know? This idea of the functional organization and the project-based organization, they compete with each other and sometimes there are conflicts and they do not understand each other. But it is something that is promoted in countries such as Ukraine, countries such as Romania, because it's something that is considered important for the productivity, for the development of those countries. I don't know if this is clear so, so far. Solo Juk, is that clear? Yes, it's very clear. And uh, I had uh, tried to uh, make some movie with the monasteries and I tried to convince the monastery it's something for commercial. And they said, I have, uh, I have to have the proof of the uh, ministry of uh, culture, of identity. Yeah, exactly. and uh, I had to have uh, his sign there. And also from the archiepiscopy of uh, Suchava and A very the area. centralized system that makes it very difficult for yeah. progress to happen. And uh, I didn't get the entity because he doesn't respond to the mails and uh, I tried to call them and uh, I said I sent that and said okay we will call you and never called them back <laughs> good so this is an example of this um, of this problem yes it's an example of how uh, the functional the traditional functional organization it's very inflexible for change and for new initiatives. But for instance, when the European Union wants to create a new course on European integration at a university that we didn't have it before, they use the project-based organization. They give you funding for one project. And they set the duration of the project and they set the budget of the project and within this limits of scope budget and time then you can develop your project and it is something that would be important for um, productivity yes and for development something that for people, for instance, who are interested in a new tourism um, product, developing a new product, it's important to know project management. It is something important also for people who want to develop a new product at a university. I mentioned sometimes that these products at universities can be also tourist products, such as if you organize a summer, a summer school, and it can be a tourist product. It's also at the same time a, uh, an academic product. There can be a, academic tourism too. But it also applies if you want to have a new Jean Monnet course, a new Jean Monnet module in Ukraine, you need to know project management and understand what project management means. Good. But this is something basic that everybody should know what a project is, what project management is, what's the difference between the functional organization and the project-based organization. But there are also mixed organizations that, as I told you, a cooperative can work as a functional organization and then to have just one specific pro uh, project for developing a new crop. But the, the idea is that uh, 
or the project management is important and you need to have a general idea of project management, what we will learn today here goes a step further. Because we don't just want to discuss the basics of project management. What we will discuss here now is something that is not usual. When you study project management in Romania or in Ukraine or in other place for projects in tourism or for projects in, in education, we will study what agile means agile methods, agile project management, what it means, agile project management. And agile methods that can be used to project management, they started in the field of software development. They started not so long ago in the field of software development and nowadays they are extremely important for software development. Agile methods. And um, what I will go now to the if you go to Agile. to the Wikipedia, you can, you should visit the Wikipedia more. In fact, some of the projects that we will do during this course will involve the Wikipedia directly, right? So it's important that you get familiar with the Wikipedia. We go to the Wikipedia. And we search for Agile Manifesto. I share my screen with you so that you can you can see my my other screen is vertical, so you, you see it a little bit smaller. But the, the article is entitled Agile Software Development. It is important that you visit this article, that you learn a little bit about the history of the Agile Software uh, Development. Agile Software Development um, is something recently new. If you can read about the history of Agile uh, software development there on the Wikipedia and also many other websites, and it is usually related to software, right? But the idea is that Agile is a philosophy. Agile is like a religion, right? Agile is a way of doing things Agile is a set of values and principles that people who run projects adhere to if they believe in Agile, right? So these kind of values and principles of Agile development, they started with software development. But nowadays, they are used in many other fields, especially in um, sectors that are innovative. If you want to develop a new product, if you want to make a new model of car, a new mobile phone, you want to design new clothing, or you want to um, design a new um, marketing campaign for a Romanian monastery, or you want to create a new Jean Monnet module in a Ukrainian university, in that case, Agile can help you very much. And Agile 
management is opposed to um, another methods that they are usually called waterfall if you have a project and you have scope you have resources and you have time for the project you usually make a plan for the project and you write on the plan what your scope will be what your resources will be what your time will be and then for three years you have to stick to your plan if you have the project to build a house you are an architect and you want to build a house what you do is you design the project you plan the project you make the drawings of the house that you will make you make the budget for your project and the duration of your project you have scope resources and time and then during the three years of the project you stick to the plan and if you control your workers that they stick to the plan and if they go outside the plan you control you bring them back to the original plan and this is a way of project management that is very traditional but in software development they realized that this kind of project management is not very effective for software development because sometimes when you are a developer and you have a customer that asks you for some functions for the for for a website for instance when they ask you for the website they don't know very well what they really want yes or they do not know in three years time when the website uh, will be working what the needs of the company exactly will be or when you are making the budget for the project for the project you do not know what the prices of the materials that you will use will be when you will implement the project there's a lot of uncertainty about what the project wants about how long it will take or the new technologies that will appear or in, in software development this is much more uh, clear it's much clearer that sometimes in a project there's a lot of uncertainty and agile project management i will explain this to you so that you will understand it very easily imagine there is an architect that wants to make the project for a house an architect in, and with a building company that wants to make a house or a construct a construction engineer civil engineer that makes a house and asks the customer for the requirements what kind of house do you want how much do you want to spend when do you want the house and makes the project and then implements the project this would be the waterfall approach the traditional water flow waterfall approach you have the project already planned and then you just implement the plan and you control any deviations from the plan but in 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 project management when you use the agile methods the agile philosophy they usually they use an iterative approach so instead of giving the customer the finished house after three years they first make one room of the house and they give it to the customer to live in this room and then they say is this okay is this as you expected we continue with the plan and maybe the customer says no yes in the beginning i wanted a room that was this size but i think now i would prefer to have fewer rooms that are larger in size 
and the agile project manager tells the customer don't worry we adapt to your changing needs and we adapt the plan we change the plan to make now the rooms larger as you prefer we adapt to change so what are the four main values of agile management the first value the first of four is individuals and interactions over processes and tools i give you an example in our website our platform we have one tool which is this platform this website right and this website is something important for us and we also have processes we have like uh, processes to uh, run the seminars to evaluate the students and so on this is important but more important than this is the people and the interactions with the people right so both are important individuals and interactions on the one hand and processes and tools on the other hand but agile says that individuals and interactions should be more important than processes and tools so you are the most important for instance for my project right and what i do i talk to with you i discuss with you have seminars with you and then if i see something that you need it's easier for me and i give priority to you and not to the tools the platform for instance so this is the first value interactions and individuals over processes and tools the second value of this uh, agile manifesto is working software over comprehensive documentation because when they developed they developed it for software but we can adapt this value to us and we say a working course over comprehensive documentation so it is important to have documentation for the course it is important to have a description of the course it is important to have the aims of the course on the website to have the list of topics of the course on the website to have the bibliography of the cost of the course on the website the, the, to have the list of students and so on. This is documentation. It is important. But more important than documentation, that papers that says what happens in the course, more important than documentation is that the course works. Right? So sometimes there can be a conflict that we if we need to do something and we don't know what should i do i do not have much time should i spend my time writing a lot of details about how the course works or should i spend my time really running the course that works and this is the second value of agile that we use for our courses and that can be used for the development of new products. So working product over comprehensive documentation. Right? This is the second value. In the Agile Manifesto, original Agile Manifesto, they say working software over comprehensive documentation. Good. We move on to the third value of agile the third value is customer collaboration over contract negotiation we mentioned that sometimes if you go to a customer and you 
are doing a website for this customer. And when you are working on the website and they tell you, I changed my mind, I don't really want now what I wanted uh, one month ago, I would prefer to introduce this or that. If you apply this idea, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, this is important. Because you can say, no, no, we signed a contract. In the contract, it was specified what you wanted, the requirements that you wanted, how much you would pay in the time that I had to deliver this to you. You cannot change the requirements now in the middle of the project. Yes, you can. Yes, because if you apply this idea of customer collaboration over contract negotiation, both are important. When we oppose two things, it doesn't mean they are unimportant. Contract negotiation is very important. Only that customer collaboration, according to the agile values, Customer collaboration is more important than contract negotiation. So it's more important to be in contact with your customer and, and know what the customer wants, not just what the customer has signed in the contract. Good. <clears throat> this can, can be applied to our projects too, but it's important, for instance, to know who is your customer first, right? If you make a course about the EU, you should know who is your customer. You can think that your customer is the students and the students are your customer in a sense. But you can also think that the European Union is your customer. Right? Because the, the ones who are paying for the course, who do you work for? Right? But it's important to have customer collaboration when you run your project. The fourth value of Agile, of the Agile Manifesto, is responding to change over following a plan. When you do things, it's important to have a plan. But sometimes there is change in circumstances. There is changes in the needs of your customer. There is changes in your environment. There is changes in the price of the materials that we will, you will need for your project. For your project, there is change in the competition. New products have come to the market and compete with yours. They can be changed. Imagine I do a course about the European Union for three years. I sign a contract. I make a plan and I sign a contract with the European Commission for three years. And in these three years, something happens. There's Brexit or there's some other important event or there's... Uh, uh, some crisis, some economic crisis or anything. What do we do in these cases? Do we follow the plan strictly or do we respond to change? Agile says following a plan is important. It's important to have a plan when you do things. But it's also important to be able to respond to change. And when they are in conflict, following the plan or responding to change, Agile says responding to change is more important than following the plan. Good. This is the basics of the Agile manifesto for values. Then there are also 12 principles that I will not discuss here. You can read them by yourself, right? But there are four main values of Agile. 
And what this means, it means that you, when you have an agile organization or when you have an agile project, what you try to do is to stick to those values, right? And agile is not like a bureaucratic method of doing projects. No, it's just a set of values and principles that you will use to run your organization or your project. Is this clear, Alina? Alina, please tell me again what was it that you did? Something medical? What what was your organization about? Um, is an organization that uh, has the purpose uh, to. Also to provide the material for the for the people like content online with information about medical uh, reasons, but also uh, is a partnership with the doctors from our country. They can have online uh, cabinet and information to be easier for patient to to arrive to them. Mm -hmm. to so you you do for instance uh, also marketing for doctors yes and and um, when you do this for instance do you do you use google to see how your website is positioned there yes, so you, you, you do search engine optimization too right mm -hmm. yes and when you 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 have a plan how to increase the 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 search engine ranking of your website right you have plans for that yes but it, it depends also from uh, from from google from how uh, exactly it works what, what if what if google you make a plan and what if google changes its algorithm yes yes and what if your competitors change the the way they do things and your ranking starts to fall? Mm -hmm. What do you do? You stick to the plan that you made or you respond to change? Right? Agile. In your sector, it's very clear. But now we talk with Romulus. If he can unmute his phone. No, solo juke. Uh, yes, we have to respond to the change, I think. So the Facebook has changed the plan of uh, uh, things on the platform, on the biggest platform, on the page, the biggest page. Uh, before I have uh, uploaded my uh, videos on YouTube and uh, send it after that on Facebook, but the Facebook has changed and I have now I have now to upload it directly to the Facebook to be promoted. Mm -hmm. So you adapt, you, yes. you respond to change, right? Yes. And that is important also for the kind of products that you produce. Yes? Exactly. And you think it's important also for the products that we make in, in this master's program in, in the development of new products and destinations for tourism, right? Yes, we have to be all the time have, informated. Look, solo juke, we have to be agile. Agile, right? yes. <laughs> Good. We go to Vitalis group in Odessa, my favorite group. So Vitali. I have a question for your group in general, just a general question. Are you agile, Vitali? Do you believe in the agile values or not? You have to unmute your phone if you know. It's not easy. It's difficult with the mobile phone. Romulus has not managed to unmute the phone. Can you unmute it? 
Vitali, so that we can hear you. You try, and if you manage later to unmute it, we, we connect. Okay, so these are the values of um, agile management. And um, agile management is what we use at the Eurosci network. Agile management is what we use uh, when we develop new products for the network products. The, the, the term product is a terminology that is used in, in Agile. For instance, in, in, in other kind of organizations, sometimes they talk about project managers. And, but in Agile, they do not use the word manager, right? They use, for instance, the, the expression product owner, right? Because the agile manager is not really a manager in the traditional sense of the word. We talk more about the agile leader, right? The agile leader is something that leads the development of new agile products, right? The agile development of new products is an agile leader. It's not like a manager. It's not like your boss. I am your boss and you work for me and you obey what I tell, right? The agile leader, Agile leader. Mm, Valentina's group has joined. Let's see. We have an echo now. We put them in mute momentarily because I think they are listening also on YouTube. I tried to put her in mute. Yes, now I managed. The idea of the agile leader is not like a boss, right? The, in, the agile leader is someone that uh, believes in self-organizing teams. The agile leader believes in self-organizing teams. If I am an agile leader, I should believe in the capacity that a team in Chernitsi or in Odessa have to organize themselves. The agile leader believes in people and believes in the ability of people to organize themselves. And an agile leader is not like the boss and the other people need to serve the leader. No, it's the other way around. It's the idea of the servant leader, right? The agile leader has to work for the members of his or her team. So agile, these four prince, these four values, they translate into 12 principles and it translates in practice into many other results. So Agile is a philosophy. Agile is like a, almost a religion. It's a set of values and principles, but then they are applied into concrete ways of doing things. And they can be applied not only to software development, where these new methods were designed and were promoted. It can be applied also to the development on, of new tourist products or of new Jean Monnet courses or of new products of any kind in fast fashion. Imagine, if you think of Zara, I talk to Alina now. Alina. Alina, are you still there? Then solo juke. Solo juke. Uh, yes. <laughs> Do you like fashion? 
fashion not in that good way fashion uh, mo mountain fashion <laughs> do, you, do you know do you know these uh, fashion brands in, in, that are now present in romania that come from spain like Zara, Bershka. Yes, yes I, I know. Have you heard of them yet, yeah, right? Yes, for sure. Yeah. What they do is called fast fashion. Fast, fast fashion. fashion is the expression. It's called fast fashion because they they make clothes that are very fashionable all the time. They change them very often. They're not clothes that with good materials that will last you for five years. They are clothes that will be fashionable now, right? And yes. in three months' time, the fashion changes and they change the clothes they sell. Before it's in Spain and after that one year or something like that, the fashion is in Romania. <laughs> it can be, that, yes, they okay. can adapt, in other, but it's changing. In Spain, changing in Romania, if you go to a Zara store now and you go to the same store in three months' time, they will not have the same clothes on sale. New ones they will have because this is fast fashion. Okay? So they, they also use agile methods. They need to use agile because they need to adapt to change, the change in fashion, right? If you uh, watch um, MTV, and on MTV you see like a new, I don't know, a new group of young people, CNCO, uh, singing and that all the young people like them, and they wear certain clothes. And then all the young people want those clothes. You know, fast fashion says that the, the, the managers of Zara that watch that video too and watch the reaction of the public, immediately they start to change the clothes. <laughs> find those clothes, to copy those clothes and to produce them very fast and to send them very fast to the shops. Yes, and in one week after you saw the video clip on the MTV, you have the clothes on the shops. Yeah, one phone to, to the China people and said, okay. <laughs> no, the, uh, the China people know. In China, you can produce, for instance, if you just want to produce a regular T-shirt or something like that, and you produce it in China. But if you want to react to a video clip that you just saw on MTV and to have this in one week, you cannot send this to China. And you do this in your headquarters, in your factory, in A Coruña, in Spain, and you produce it very fast there, right? Uh -huh. And okay. from China, you bring the T-shirts and the, and the black uh, briefs and the things that never change and, and you don't need to be so fast, right? That means the, all the Zara products are produced in Spain? Not I, all. Not all. The most but, uh, innovative. The most innovative. I, I didn't know that. <laughs> to produce fast, right? Because, yes. <laughs> and then the ones that you have, because if you send it to produce in China, it will take months. Only for it to yeah, come from sure. China and go to China and so on. For the fast things, you do it fast at home, even if it's more expensive, right? But also those people who want to have the MTV shirt, the first, they are ready to pay more for that. Fast fashion, all right? Good. With this, we finish for today. I thank you all very much for your presence. Also, Valentina's group, which is in, in Chernivtsi. There are four simultaneous connections on YouTube at the moment. We don't know, but some of those connections can be with multiple people in them. Valentina has been sending me pictures also on Facebook about her group in Chernivtsi. 
I thank you very much. As you know, we have some technical difficulties still, and we have to adapt to those uh, to those difficulties. Of course, in our plan, we don't have all the details of how this thing should work or not. Yes, but we have a working course, and that is very important for us. I thank you all for your presence. Also, the people who have watched on YouTube, if you like the video on YouTube, please give a thumbs up to the video. If you haven't liked it, please give thumbs down. And uh, if you um, want to follow these lectures, remember that they are every Monday at 11.30 Eastern European time. And we also have a seminar on Fridays at 1800 Eastern European time. I thank you all very much for your presence and participation. And see you soon. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.